and reset. Put my hands down, lift, stop. We have an unboxing. So this is the YG Pocket Timer. The catch, however, is that this timer is touchless. So you basically just have it down. Which is the new YJ Pocket Timer. I can do better. So there's this new timer, and if you didn't know it already, it's called the YJ Touchless Timer. So after a bit of digging, I found Laser Monkey's video on this timer. And well... Yeah. So here's why it's bad. One, you need a table and a bit of space on both sides for it to work. Two, they basically made another timer but with a different starting input. A stopwatch has a button, the stack timer has two pressure sensors, and the YJ timer just uses an infrared sensor. Three, it's not ideal to be portable. Sure, it's a pocket timer. I have no idea why you would need this. But if you're out and about, just use your phone because it gives you a scramble and gives you an average. So that got me thinking. What if I built my own timer that gave you scrambles and averages your times? And that's exactly what I did. So my idea was to have this ultrasonic sensor sense if something was in front of it or not. And instead of an annoying beep sound, I have this green LED. And when it is timing, the timer is then displayed on the four digit LED display. But I had to get rid of the LED display because it took 10 inputs in order for it to work. And I only had 13 and I needed other things to work. So time to assemble it. Arduino, breadboard, ultrasonic sensor, LED, resistor, jumper wires, wire to my computer, spending a week coding trying to get the sequence to work, headaches, and we're done. Sort of. So right now we have everything hooked up and pretty much ready to go. So this is basically how it works in a nutshell. So the ultrasonic sensor is going to send a pulse, and if it doesn't get anything back, then it just repeats. But when it does sense that something is there, then it waits a second before turning on the LED. Now it is going to keep sensing until it doesn't sense the cube. Once that happens, it starts a timer and keeps sensing until the cube is sensed. It stops the time, turns off the LED, and prints the solve as solve number one. This repeats five times so that you get five solves. At the end, it then adds up all the solves and divides them by five. Once it gets to this point, it resets all the variables and starts over. But Goose, that's not how averages work. Yeah, well, it didn't let me take out the best number of solves, so cry more. Okay, Goose, this is this is cool and all, but what about a scramble? Well, I'm glad you asked because that took another week to figure out. I originally thought I could just tell the code to pick notations and print them. Easy, right? No, it doesn't work. Why? Because then I get sequences like this, where I get R and then R prime or vice versa. And that doesn't work at all. So I gotta figure something out. Well, I figured out that there's six groups of notations. And in each group is a notation, the prime of that notation, and the two of that notation. So after about a week of trying lots of different things, this is basically my final design for the scramble. So it has two strings and strings are basically something that holds a bunch of variables, and I'm basically telling it to take turns just picking random notations from each string. But each string has three groups, so you're not gonna get R and then R prime. So there's not gonna be like 43 quintillion different scrambles, but you're gonna get a fair amount, and that's what we're going for. So all I gotta do is just take the code from the scramble, put it into the final, and bing, bang, boom, we got now a touchless timer. Sort of, because now we gotta make it look nice. Obviously I can't do any like 3D printing stuff because well, I suck at it. But what I do know is Legos. And if you've been following my channel for long enough, you know I've been doing Lego creation stuff type things. So all I gotta do is just build a little box for the Arduino and now, bing, bang, boom, we're done. Except we're not. So we're not done because of this reason. It's not displaying on the timer. On the YJ timer, it displays the time and that's what makes it a timer. Mine just prints it onto the computer, which is not a timer. So what do I gotta do? I gotta figure out a way to print the scramble or really anything onto the actual timer. Well, I was able to figure something out. So all the magic lies behind this little thing. It's an LCD or a liquid crystal display. So I basically spent another week trying to get the timer more accurate because it's not actually a timer, it's more of just a variable that's counting and trying to get the LCD to work properly. And I think I was able to do that. Yes. Okay, so I know like the scramble doesn't exactly look right, but 
That's because each notation is taking up two spaces and I only have 16 spaces on the top and 16 spaces on the bottom. So I kind of need to scrunch it in order to get enough notations. But after a bit, it becomes readable and it's kind of fine, <laughs> yeah. So here I got pretty much all the wires hooked up to the LCD and everything. So I bolt the top, it looks like this. And uh, all we gotta do is assemble everything and we will be good to go. So one, I could bore you with all this or I could just go out, put the top on and boom, we got a timer. But here lies the question that you're all probably wondering. Hey Goose, does it even work? <laughs> does it work? What a silly question. <laughs> Wait, I had to actually make this thing work? Yes, it works. So I can't really have the sensor, use the ultrasonic sensor to sense and see if the cube is basically placed down and have a timer running at the exact same time. So I basically just tried different like starting points of the actual timer and then like try to divide, blah, 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 do stuff to get the timer pretty much as accurate as I can, just around 12 seconds. So if you average around like 12 seconds like me, then you'll, you'll get a pretty, pretty accurate time. But if you average anywhere like 20 and beyond or even sub 10, more like six, seven and eight, then you're not really gonna get a very accurate time. It'll still be like close, but it'll probably be like a second or two off. But we gotta test it out because you haven't seen this thing in action yet. Okay, now I know I'm not gonna bore you with like five minutes of me just solving on it. So I'm just gonna show maybe like a few uh, snippets of some solves and so, yeah. So now after many weeks of trying to get this to work. Sorry to all of you because this video is now like a month after my last. I finally have a touchless timer. Alright, I know, it's been a fat second. Well, a, m a month actually. But I've been working non-stop on this video for the past month. That's not a lie, I have been actually. This video probably could have come out like two, maybe even three weeks ago. But because of major setbacks from the timer, obviously that was delayed. But now the video as you are actually watching right now is finally out and I hope you guys enjoyed the timer. Now I know, you guys are probably wondering, Goose, why, why did you build a timer? There's no reason for it. You even said it yourself, it's not even that accurate. Well, I'll tell you why. Two reasons. One, it was in the beginning of the video. YJ Pocket Timer. And reason number two, if you haven't really noticed, there's a global pandemic going on and we can't exactly touch or touch things people have touched. If that makes sense. Which leads into the WCA competitions. We can't exactly touch the stack mat timers because, well, that's other people are touching it. So that leads into touchless timers. And if we can build a reliable touchless timer, then that's one way that the WSA can segue competitions back. If you haven't already, make sure you smash that subscribe button because for some reason, 96% of you are not subscribed. Here's the photo to prove it. Bruh, look at this dude. Make sure you smash the like button because that'll tell me that you like the videos of where I just build stuff, if that makes sense. If you guys have any ideas on what I should build next or what kind of videos I should do, then make sure you leave them in the comments down below. If you guys want an unedited version of me just using the actual timer, then, well, one, smash like, two, comment that down below, and three, if you guys want me to do stream that on Twitch, leave that in the comments down below. But that'll be all. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.